Hi, I'm Connor Botts of Tricky Fast Studios. In this series, we're going to be taking a look at how to make a game very similar to Flappy Bird using Cat Game Builder. In this video, we're going to add moving obstacles and a way to spawn them to our game. The first thing we're going to do is go back into our starting prefabs folder, where we found our starting bird game object, and drag in the starting obstacle game object. Just like with the bird, we're going to add a state machine and cats to this game object to make it do a few different things. Just like Flappy Bird, when the game starts, we're going to want this obstacle to move across the screen. And then, once the obstacle is finished moving across the screen, we want it to stop. The behavior for this is pretty simple, so we're only going to need two states. Let's call them Move and Disable. So under our move state, we're going to add two actions. The first action is going to be a set velocity action. The next action is going to be a triggered action with a collision trigger underneath it. In the set velocity action, leave the target on owner, set the new velocity to negative 7, and uncheck Y and Z, and check revert on stop. This will make the obstacle move from right to left across the screen only on the X axis, and when this action stops because we checked revert on stop, the obstacle will too. Then in the collision trigger, we're going to uncheck check on start, we're going to set the collide target to named and obstacle reset. This is the game object that we have inside our bounds that's all the way to the left off the screen that we're going to use to stop our obstacles when they hit that trigger. So then go back to the collision trigger and check is trigger and that's it. Then when we do hit this trigger we're going to want to change to our disable state. So add a change state action. And that's it for our move state. Then in our disable state, we actually only need to add one action. This action is going to be under target management and it's a add target to list action. Under the list parameter, change the type from owner to named, and type in obstacle spawner. And then under reference name, type in idle obstacles. Set the target to owner and uncheck allow duplicates. What this action does is when we create our obstacle spawner game object in a few moments, there will be a variable underneath that object called idle obstacles. Idle obstacles is a game object list that's going to hold all our idle obstacles that we're not using in our obstacle pool. This will make it so that we only have to spawn five or six obstacles and not keep spawning and destroying them, which is much more efficient. And with this, we complete our obstacle prefab. The only thing left to do is to change the name and make this a prefab. You can change the name to anything but starting obstacle or just regular obstacle. I'm going to call this one my obstacle. And then drag this into your prefabs folder. And save your scene. You can now delete the my obstacle game object from your hierarchy as we're going to be using it as a prefab to spawn into our game. The next thing we're going to do is create our obstacle spawner. So create a new game object. Reset its position and rename it to Obstacle Spawner. Then set its position to 15, 2, 0. This is the position that we're going to want to spawn our obstacles at. And then add a state machine and a value holder component to this game object. Once you've added those two components, 
Create the following values underneath the value holder. A game object list value, a game object value, two vector three values, a float value, and an integer value. Rename the game object list value to idle obstacles. Like I mentioned a minute ago, this list is going to be used to store our pooled obstacles that we're going to pull from to send across the screen at the penguin. Then, under the game object value, rename this to next obstacle. We'll be using this variable as a container for when we're initializing the obstacle that we're pulling from the pool. Then, under one of your vector three value components, rename one of them to top pipe offset. and then rename the other one to bottom pipe offset. These two values will be used to store the random offset that we use for the top and bottom part of the obstacles. This will make it so that some obstacles have narrower gaps than others. Then under the float value component, rename that one to obstacle delay. We'll be using this variable as the delay between obstacles. And then finally, under the integer value component, rename this to obstacle pool size. We'll be using this value to determine how many obstacles to spawn at the start of the game. These are all the variables we should need to finish our game. Now, let's add our states to our state machine. For the obstacle spawner, we're going to need four states. We're going to need to initialize our spawner, set the next obstacle that we're going to send at the penguin, initialize that next obstacle we're going to send at the penguin, and finally one state for the delay between the obstacle. Let's start with the initialize pool state. The first thing we're going to add to the initialize pool state is a looping action. For this looping action, we're going to leave the run type on serial, the delay on zero, and set the loops to owner, and then obstacle pool size, which we made just a moment ago. And we also want to make sure that we set our obstacle pool size. So let's go set that to five. That way we'll spawn five obstacles for our pool at the start of the game. Then underneath this looping action, let's, we only need to add one action, which is a spawn action. We're gonna set the target position to owner, the parent to none, the prefab to be our my obstacle prefab that we created. The rotation to be 0, 60, 0. And that's it. This spawn action will spawn our obstacle prefab where our obstacle spawner is while also rotating it to its proper rotation. And that's it for the initialized pool state. You should now have your obstacle prefab and the spawning state of the obstacle spawner completed. In this video, we went over working with lists in CAT and how to spawn game objects. For more information on CAT and how it can help you prototype and build games faster, please visit trickyfast.com/cat. I'm Connor Bots, TrickyFast Studios, and thanks for watching.